Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In a previous video I had used the Monument Launcher to attach a S2 booster to the International Space Station and sent it to the moon. So it is currently in orbit around the moon as you can see but that poses a problem because now we can't rendezvous with it with the space shuttle. Unless of course we launch the space shuttle on a Monument Launcher as well. And so this video is going to be about launching the space shuttle to the International Space Station with the Monument Launcher. Now, not the full Monument Launcher, which is 50,000 tons. This is just 30,000 tons. It doesn't have all of its boosters. Just as a reminder, the Monument Launcher boosters have RD-270 engines. The core has M1 engines, which were the largest hydrogen-oxygen engines ever designed. And those are equivalent to the F1 engines on the Saturn V, except they use hydrogen and oxygen. And we have 41 of them at the bottom of the core of the first stage, 13 of them on the second stage. Currently there are four booster pods, each one has four RD-270 engines, and those are just using UDMH and NTO. There is a pentaboring NTO option for the RD-270, but we are not using those. So off go the boosters, they go in pairs like that, and we are still on the core. And then the core goes out, and our Separatrons are actually AJ-60As with most of the solid fuel gone, so that they only last a few seconds. But yes, those are the boosters on the Atlas V being used as Separatrons. So, the second stage is bringing us to orbit here, and then this is all the easy part. Because we've got this huge rocket, the Monument Launcher bringing the Space Shuttle up is no problem at all. And now comes the hard part, which is transferring to the moon and then bringing the shuttle back. And we only partially filled the external tank that's only half full uh, for complicated reasons. Uh, we also have a variant of the RS-25 on the tail. The Space Shuttle main engines are a vacuum variant that can air light, or in this case space light, and they have better performance in vacuum. They have a area ratio of 150. They got the big nozzle. And so we could only fit two of them. On uh, replacing the top engine is the RL-10s from a Titan rocket. And we actually have the Centaur from the Titan rocket in the bay. So you can see in the cargo bay, there's the Centaur. And sort of like a shuttle Centaur, we've taken the RL-10s from that Centaur and put it in the back of the shuttle, replacing the top engine. And then we also have extra fuel for the AJ-10-190s. That's the little tank on the top of the Centaur stage. That's extra MMH and Mon-3 to feed our hypergolic engines. So we actually do use the boosters to transfer to the moon. As I understand it, people like using solid boosters to transfer. I don't think they had this in mind, but here we are. Now we do use them, separate them. I've still got to figure out the separation properly. And then we finish it off with the main engines. We have we have three ignitions, remember, and so that's one of them. And we finish it. The next ignition for the main engines will be around the moon when we capture, and then the final one would be to bring our orbit down when we're around Earth again from the high Earth orbit, the transfer orbit to the moon or back, and then down to low Earth orbit. Here we're using the RL10s to bring our orbit down. These are RL10A3s, I believe. And so they're an old RL-10, the one on the Titan rocket. And they do a correction, a mid-course correction, and we use our RCS to refine that. And the ISS is in this polar orbit, which makes it a little bit tricky. Fortunately, our timing was good, and so we're right in line with it. No big inclination correction is necessary. And there's the capture burn with the main engines. And there is the RS-25s briefly. Again, that's an RO configuration that was not my idea. They had it there and that gave me this idea, uh, among other ideas. I've got a lot of ideas to put these vacuum versions of the RS-25s to use, and we'll see those later, since they have decided to give me them. And here in our burn with the RL-10s, setting up our encounter with the International Space Station, and then of course the burn to match speeds with the International Space Station around the moon. Now, it is my intention to dock to the International Space Station, of course, and we have to dock with the external tank because it's carrying the fuel that will let us get back to a low Earth orbit at the end so that we can re-enter the shuttle safely. And one reason why I 
underfueled the external tank was to make sure it wasn't so heavy. We've got extra little thrusters on the inner tank as we see the magnificent view of the ISS, the shuttle, ex external tank, Earth and the Moon. Um, we've got, they're the same basic R RCS units that the space shuttle actually has, about two kilonewtons, and we just put extra ones on the external tank at the inner tank, which seemed like the most logical position, and they were sufficient to make sure that we could have the proper balance while docking. And as you can see, I'm approaching very carefully. However, what I didn't realize was that this APAS docking port is attached to the airlock that comes with the shuttle mod. However, the airlock that comes with the shuttle mod uh, has its top node reversed. So it accidentally attaches to the top node of the docking port, the one that actually has to dock, rather than the bottom node on the docking port. And so when we try to dock here, we won't connect. I'm using the camera on the docking port to do it very precisely, but no luck. And that remains the case I try a few times, but yeah, there's no way to dock with it like that. We'll have to fix that in order to make this happen. So already we are probably going to have a second try at this. Also, the fact that our MMH in Mon 3 is so low causes a problem. Uh, and we'll see that later on as well once we're around the Earth. And we need more of that. We need to have better efficiency in this whole business. And so we have some changes to make after this attempt. And we will see those in a later video where I try this again and make sure that we actually dock. But anyway, I decided to take it back home. And so we're doing a very long burn with the RL-10s in order to get back home. In fact, if we had test flight in here, this would exceed their burn time, so I will admit that. Uh, that is a bit unfortunate, and we will have to work on that, but for now we don't have test flight and we don't have burn limits, and so they were able to burn for a substantial time, and then this is an additional correction we had to do at our apoapsis, so we had a view of Earth and the Moon very high up, and then here we are coming back down close to the Earth. Now you'll see the Delta V is very low there, but that's because we're still on the RL-10s and the fuel mix in the external tank is not proper for the RL-10s. So once we activate the SSMEs again, you'll see that we happen to have 3,100 meters per second, which is exactly what we need in order to get to a low Earth orbit at this point. Uh, so yes, we do. Here is the third ignition of these vacuum RS-25s that have three ignitions. Uh, it deviates a little bit, so we have to shut them off. The Centaur Sage in the cargo bay, of course, has the fuel mix for the RL-10s, so that's all right. And I decided that I would quick save, and we were going to try to deorbit the external tank, but then get back to orbit ourselves, because we're not currently in a situation that will allow us to re-enter properly and get to Cape Canaveral, which is where I intended to land. And so we uh, do this retro burn and then I decouple the external tank and then we have to flip around. There's only one ignition left on the RL-10s right now because of a little issue. I accidentally, when I throttled, uh, wiped out like five ignitions with the RL-10s, otherwise we definitely have enough, they have ten. Uh, but yeah, we only have one left here because of that sort of uh, issue with my throttle, and so I have to do this flip in order to get back into orbit. One reason I'm doing this is because the re-entry script that I normally use in order to re-enter isn't meant to re-enter with the external tank, its calculations will be off because it takes the shuttle's mass into consideration. And so if we kept the external tank on, that wouldn't be any good. I wanted to deorbit it, but another option is just to dump it without deorbiting it, and that's what we're going to have to do because uh, after I try to get rid of the wastewater and trim this out as much as possible, we don't have enough MMH in Mon 3 for the AJ-10s now to deorbit us. Uh, we and then reserve enough RCS propellant for our re-entry. So because of that, we have a problem. And so I try to get the script to deorbit us, but we don't have enough which means that we actually need the one ignition on the RL-10s to do the deorbit de burn. We just don't have enough fuel with the AJ-10 190s, and that's what I have to do. So I have to load back that save that I made, and this is why I made it, because I wasn't sure I had enough, and instead of deorbiting the external tank, I have to dump the external tank right away, 
and then use the RL10s in order to do the orbit burn. So, yes, all very complicated. Fortunately, we're reasonably in line with Cape Canaveral as far as that's concerned. We came back at a good inclination, and here the RL10s are using their one ignition in order to deorbit us. So that part's okay. And here the reentry script is trying its best to get us back to Cape Canaveral. But we do have another problem. You see, the balance of the shuttle is quite different now. We removed one of the main engines in the back, and the two RL-10s don't counterbalance it. And I guess they didn't make the engines too much heavier in the vacuum version. They have a really big nozzle. They should be pretty heavy, but not heavy enough to make up for the fact that we have taken off one of the main engines. And that means that since there's less mass in the back, the center of mass has moved forward, meaning that we are nose heavy and it is struggling to keep our nose up here now and it doesn't. And so here it fails to do that. And because it's trying to use all the RCS to do that, it can't use the RCS to hold roll and yaw as well. And so it goes awry. Uh, fortunately, it looks like we were just slow enough so that we wouldn't burn up. You can see it was overheating all the way. I mean, there's not a whole lot of margin on the shuttle. It's a lot like a Maimaya space plane in the RP-1 series. There, We have to do it properly, otherwise it will blow up. But we were slow enough at that point. It doesn't seem to have the same heat accumulation problem that the Maya spacecraft has. Uh, so it does cool down and I was able to recover it. And so here we are doing our stall recovery. But unfortunately, we are nowhere near Cape Canaveral. All that caused a lot more drag. And, you know, especially the fact that we pitched down and weren't getting as much lift. So, but maybe we wouldn't have made it to Cape Canaveral anyway. The aerodynamics will need some more attention. And here, right at the end, as we're trying to splash down, I didn't appreciate that it had a higher stall speed than I expected. I normally expect 90 meters per second for the shuttle. It seems like it's not 90 meters per second, and here I was not able to pull up. So, as we smash into the Gulf of Mexico really, really hard, I'm gonna wrap it up here, and we will have to make another attempt at this in a later video. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.